Now, coming into psychiatry, I was quite excited. I'd done acute medicine, I'd done vascular surgery, and I was thinking, boy, this is gonna be a more relaxed rotation. You've been on my mind like it's payday. I know they not fat, I don't care what they say. Will we go, will we play, replay? Oh I can start revising for some of those entrance exams and getting lead weight into those. But psychiatry was very different from what I thought. I'll just quickly run you through what the day structure would be. So you start off the day, you come in at nine. Usually you have about an hour to 30 minutes to get a few of the jobs in the morning done. So for example, some of the patients might be on lithium. So they need lithium bloods on a Monday. Some of them on clozapine. So you need to take clozapine bloods just to check how they're doing, the white cell count, you know, all those sorts of things just to monitor these patients. The next thing I usually do is prep for ward round because these ward rounds are a lot more extensive compared to medical and surgical ward rounds. And in med medicine, you do actually prep the notes anyway. So you have an idea of what's happening before the consultant reviews. So same in psychiatry, I started looking at the notes, looking at the medications and just getting a feel of what's happening, what doses they're on, are they taking the PRNs. After that, you go into ward rounds. So for example, you could see three or four patients and they're usually about 30 minutes each. After you've seen those patients, you might have a break. There might be some teaching, especially on a Monday. There was like three hours of four, three hours of teaching in the afternoon and that's Monday done. Tuesday, once again, it's the same structure. See patients in the morning, but then you also see patients in the afternoon. In the afternoon, there's like a teaching slot bang in the middle of seeing patients so you see patients take a break and see another patient as well so and then on thursday once again see patients in the morning see patients in the afternoon same with wednesday as well so you're actually spending a lot of your time just seeing patients on friday is when we actually get to crack on most of the jobs you can get jobs done in between the other days but you know the majority of jobs will be done on friday the kind of things that you do that are similar across all three jobs is ordering investigations taking bloods but the difference in psychiatry is the process is longer because usually um, usually unless if it's part of the same trust the psychiatry hospital you know you need to send a referral request via letter to a secretary the secretary forwards it to the consultant radiologist for example if you want an mri scan they assess the request and then they send you an email telling you this has been approved whereas in a hospital you literally send it via a system like ice where you request it online it goes straight away you call them you can answer literally within 30 minutes to an hour the other big difference is discharge letters in psychiatry the discharge letters were about four to five pages in medicine the discharge letters are one page and a half in surgery they're a page so there's a drastic difference in the amount of details you're expected to know for the patients this is because in psychiatry patients tend to stay for a longer period of time as opposed to in in surgery where they're in for the operation once they start recovering the good they're out there are the odd exceptions that stay for a long period of time whereas in acute medicine you know it's medium. They can be there for a long period of time or they're those that come in and leave. It seems like for me, I spent a lot of my time trying to get around the online system. In psychiatry, we used online documenting and online prescribing. One of the things that you have to really keep in mind is if a trust is going to buy a system of documenting and prescribing, it has to be worth the money. It has to be good. If you buy the cheaper systems, it makes a doctor's life long. You spend all your time trying to enter these datas, duplicating between two systems that don't talk to each other. It literally makes your life a living hell. Pen and paper is probably more superior if the trust is not willing to spend money in a good system. Things that I liked about psychiatry is, you know, the patients are interesting. You know, you get to break that stigma around psychiatric patients. I was on an acute male ward. And, you know, you get to realize that also people, they just, you know, they're going through an illness, but it doesn't take away from their personality and who they are. They are reasonable people. You can negotiate with them. You can speak with them. You know, you don't have to be afraid with them, but there are measures in place in case things go out of hand and people get aggressive. And you need to know when to step away and leave a situation that's escalating. Things I hate about psychiatry is the pace is so slow. And, you know, when you're expected to do everything medical. So on my ward, I would be the phlebotomist, I would take the ECGs. You can't treat patients acutely, whereas in surgery or acute medicine, somebody's unwell, do my sepsis six screen, start them on IV antibiotics, IV fluids. Here I can't. I think they've got sepsis, I could start them on oral antibiotics if I'm worried at the, at the most after I've taken the bloods and call for an ambulance for them to be taken to a &E. You know, it's quite of a different process of I'm going to start treating them, escalate for help, get a senior true view to this patient is really unwell, let me send them in. It's almost like you're more senior compared to the other roles because there was no F2. So I'm the F1. I'm taking the F2 shoes and sometimes if the reg is not there who's usually a core GP trainee, 
I'm the only doctor on the ward. The consultant is in their office doing other things. I'm assessing all medical issues that are there. It's my decision whether to escalate it and get them sent to hospital or to decide what investigation to do. The good thing is I had a lot of experience in medicine, a lot of experience in, in surgery. So I was quite competent and confident in, in my skills. The other thing that I haven't talked about across all three rotations was locuming. So in psychiatry, I actually couldn't locum because you can't section patients for some reason. I don't know why, they wouldn't let me locum. So it was a nine to five day post, five days a week, it was pretty chilled. So I could actually locum in surgery because I just left surgery and night shifts in surgery were the easiest shift to locum in my experience. So I'll just do locum night shifts on a weekend where I could. In my opinion, I would say if you want to get the most out of things, definitely do an acute medical role, do a surgical role. I probably wouldn't advise to do psychiatry as an F1 due to the limitations of on-call shifts that you can't do which is probably a good learning curve because that's where you see loads of different patients from different wards and loads of different presentations. That exposure as an F1 is not there. And if you're not a person that wants to sit around doing admin all day, then don't pick psychiatry. I've been staying up north on the city pond time. Mommy by the brain lows by the cross that line. No, I don't want to FaceTime, not this time, this time. I'm